Okay, so this one's a shoulder sleeper stretch. The shoulder area is incredibly crowded and a lot of issues end up usually happening around that area. First of all, you've got a ball and socket joint, which is not the most stable joint in the body. Then you've got all the, the tendons and, and uh, ligaments coming from the chest, from the bicep, from the shoulder, from the lats, from the tricep, all converging in this one area. And then you've got the skeletal structure from your clavicle and your scapula and all the bones and everything that sort of end up in that one point all converging together and as you move they sort of move together and apart and the chances of impingement are incredibly high. So more often than not if you train quite a lot or if you just move quite a lot you'll end up with some form of niggle or something around this area if you're not completely careful about it. But then again if you don't train then you're likely to develop weakness and that weakness is going to start causing problems as well as you get older. So it's a bit of a catch-22. Now one of the main things is that because of the cramped nature of it, that impingement can cause a, a situation where things get tight and they stay tight. They've got nowhere to go because you get inflammations and things like that that, that start, to, start to rub against the bones that are in there and then those inflammations don't go down because they're constantly being aggravated. So this exercise is very, very good for opening up the shoulder area and the shoulder girdle area and trying to create a little bit more room and trying to release the tendons out and allowing just that little bit more movement one day at a time. Now if you can do this exercise and once you see it, if it looks easy, it's maybe not. You need to try it first, as with all of these. But if you try it and it is incredibly easy, then maybe you don't need to do this yet. Um, th this is one of these ones that actually you could miss out if you're incredibly mobile in your shoulder. It's not something you have to put in, even for longevity. It's only when things start to tighten up. Because as you'll see, the range of motion is hampered by where the floor is. And because of that, you, you really, if you can get that far and, and it's completely comfortable, you don't need to do lots of them. But essentially, all you need for this is just floor space. That's, that's it. However, I'm going to use a foam roller for positioning my leg on. And the reason for that is just simply it keeps your spine in a more neutral position and it's easier to just prop your body without adding movement into it. That doesn't mean to say you have to do it. You could use a cushion or something like that under your leg as well if, it's, if it makes it more comfortable. You don't have to do this. I've done it plenty of times without any apparatus whatsoever. It's more about the shoulder. Now, when you go on the floor, the idea is to try and get your shoulder locked forward and stuck in position. You want your upper arm coming straight out from your body. There shouldn't be too much of an angle on it because that's either going to make it an awful lot harder or an awful lot easier. And then when you do the press, which you'll see, you're pressing here, you're pressing on your, the, beyond your wrist, not on your hand, where you're creating a, a sort of a cocked situation where you've got to push against that as well. You're pushing from here and you're pushing gently. When you start to feel the stretch, you push into it gently and figure out how far you can take that comfortably. Do not over push this because you could do some damage. So gently press into it until you feel a light stretch, hold it there. Then after a while, if it starts to relax off and you feel you could go a little bit further, take a big deep breath and breathe out as you just take it a few centimeters further, if even a few centimeters. Just be careful with it, but it is an incredibly effective stretch if you do have tension in there, which I very much do. And this is one of the exercises I found most beneficial uh, when training from home. So again, as you're pressing down, make sure that you're doing it gently, you don't overstretch yourself, you should feel tension up here, but remember, if you can get your hand all the way down to the floor without your elbow lifting up and without your shoulder moving, then you've probably got enough mobility in your shoulder and you don't really need to do this. If you can get it all the way to the floor but you feel the stretch, then it's still worth doing, but if you're getting it all the way down there and there is no stretch whatsoever and it just feels complete, completely comfortable and you don't really understand what it's doing, 
then maybe it's not for you and maybe it's something you can avoid at the moment. But it's something worth checking back on if you do feel over, over the months and years that you start to feel a little bit of tension in your shoulders. Try it again and make sure you try it on both sides because you might find one shoulder needs it and one shoulder doesn't. So give it a shot, see how you got on and if you get any trouble, come back and let me know. And if you've got any questions, again, get in touch. I'll do what I can to help.